What is money? Or more like, what does money represent? Money is just a product of our imagination. It is what you believe it is. Let me explain. Money is usually described as a medium of exchange that is an instrument used to facilitate the sale, purchase or trade of goods between two parties. Let me tell you an anecdote. When I was a kid, we would bring different types of food for lunch. Some would bring tasty chocolate bars, actually for dessert, while others would bring some cookies. Of course, being a kid, you wanted what you didn't have. So what would we do? We exchange it. I would get a piece of chocolate for a piece of cookie, or more like two, because that was fair. Does this mean that a cookie or chocolate can be considered as money? Well, yes and no. See, to understand what money is, we need to go back in time. Before money was invented, people bartered for goods and services. This means that I would exchange something in return for something else. For example, I will give you tea and you will give me salt. It wasn't until 300 years ago when the first metal money, or more like coins, were created. This metal piece of valuable metal were revolutionary as it allowed to exchange a number of coins for a certain amount of tea instead of doing so by weight. In the 15th century, money as we know it was created. It was just a physical piece of paper which was much lighter and easier to carry than metal coins, which would allow for easier trade and transportation, not only at home but also across the world. See, the invention of money builds on three characteristics which I will tell you as soon as you like this video and subscribe to this channel, it will help me a lot. When money is used to act as the intermediate in the exchange of goods and services, it is performing a function as medium of exchange. This means that you give me money and I give you something. This avoided the inefficiency of a barter system. For example, I wanted tea and you wanted salt, but all I could offer was sugar and even though I was in a desperate need of tea, I couldn't exchange it, because what you wanted I did not have. Having a medium of exchange which is widely recognized and approved would help with these issues, such that I or anyone would then have the freedom to spend money as they want. After all, who doesn't want money, right? So now that we can exchange money for a product, I can use money to acquire as many items as I wanted, instead of having to carry everything around in a big box of dog food or commodities to exchange for basic needs like flour or even plants. But what is the fun of having money if we cannot count it? Yet, it is not as easy as that. Money can be used as a unit of exchange, which means it is a standard numerical unit of measure of the market value of services or other transactions. In this way, money acts as a standard measure and a common denomination of trade. This means it is easy to negotiate and bargain in prices. And while prices will increase because of inflation, no matter what, one dollar will always be one dollar. And that is because money can be used as a store of value. Money must be able to be reliable, saved, stored and retrieved. And no matter when, it can be used as a medium of exchange. You can leave it in your closet, come back three years, and one dollar will still be one dollar. The value of money will remain the same over time. I mean, you cannot put a cow in a vault and expect it to have the same value as 50 years from now, let alone hope that it's still alive. Yet, with our current version of money, we can do that. Not put the cows, but yeah, store to be value. If we didn't have the ability to save money and store it, the world would be a much more chaotic place as it was in the past when society had forms of money where they could not store it. If whatever you have in your pocket ticks all these three boxes, so it's a medium of exchange, for a unit of account and it stores value, then most likely means that you, my friend, have money in your pocket.